In this video, I'm going to show you how I create narrator notes for our concerts. I have always believed that a good narrator will benefit a concert in several ways. First, by their personality, they can relate to the audience and help the audience feel like they're welcome and valued. Second, with well-written notes, they can connect the audience to the music. They can introduce them to the composer or the arranger. They can tell a short story about how the music came to be, and they can become part of the entertainment. Finally, they can give the musicians a rest, especially with adult musicians who don't have the endurance they had when they were in high school or college, playing just about every day. Musicians need a rest in between tunes. Narration gives them this rest and gives them a bit of time to shuffle any music or equipment if they need to do that. I've been writing narrator notes for band concerts for about 14 years now and have developed some procedures to help speed up the process. I hope this helps you as you develop your own narrator notes. Hey, this is David, and I'm about to show you how I create narrator notes for each concert. The first thing I do is to go to my Dropbox folder where I keep all the narrator notes. I click on the name tag to sort them with the latest narrator note at the top. I am now in December of 2017. The latest narrator notes we have done is October of 2017. I click on that. I press Control C to copy it. I press Control V to paste it. Notice we now have narrator notes copy. I'm going to press F2 to rename that. I'm going to press the right arrow to move the cursor down to the end, and I'm going to change the date on this, doing the back arrow key to year 2017. The month is December, so that will be a 2, and then a dash. The date of the concert is the 17th. We now have the narrator notes renamed for the December concert. Now, I just thought of something. I don't want to copy the latest one of those because the latest one of those is not a Christmas concert. So I am now going to delete what I just made. I'm going to press Shift Delete, and that removes it permanently instead of sending it to my recycle bin, and I press OK. I'm going to come down here to my last Christmas concert because Christmas concerts are different than normal concerts. Matter of fact, sometimes I will copy a concert of exactly a year ago because all the lead-in information is the same. I am now going to do Control-C, copy that, Control-V, paste it. We now have the narrator notes from the Christmas concert made into a copy. I'm going to press F2 to edit that, right arrow to put the cursor where I want it, do the back arrow until I get to 2000. 17-12-17, and that's going to be the date of the Christmas concert. I now have the narrator notes set up for the correct date. I'm going to open them by just hitting the Enter key, and here they come. They opened up. The Mississippi Community Symphonic Band Christmas Concert. This is now going to be changed to December 17th. 2017. That's the first thing I'm going to do. Next, I am scrolling down through the narrator notes, the introductory announcement. Welcome to the band's, let's change 2016 to 2017 Christmas concert. There's the introduction there. We're now going to change the names of the tunes in each one of these. Now, to do that, I'm going over to the band's web page. I'm going to click on Rehearsal Info. This will be our concert information, as you can see right here. First thing we have is Festive Christmas by Kenny Beershank. I'm going to do that. Festive. Christmas by, he's really, I know it's arranged because there's a lot of traditional carols in there. Kenny, B-I-E-R-S-C-H-E-N-K, is that it? Control tab to get back there, S-C-H-E-N-K, that is correct. Let There Be Peace on Earth is arranged by Ed Huckabee. Let's go to the next one first. Before I go to the next one, I'm going to click to put the cursor right there, I'm going to delete everything except the first letter because I'm going to 
put new narrator notes in for festive Christmas. Now I'm going to do page down, page down. The second tune is control tab. Let there be peace on earth. Arrange Ed Huckabee. Let there be peace on earth. I'm going to just hold down the control shift key and collect all of the setting, hit the delete key, arrange, aha, we have that one, Ed, H-U-C-K-E-B-Y. Okay. I'm now going to delete all of the notes from last year's tune, except for the first, and I'm leaving that in as a placeholder. And there we go. I do the same for all of the rest of the tunes, and that will be the skeleton outline of the concert. I'll be back after I've done all that. I'm now at the end of the first half, and I noticed over here on the list of tunes, we have one more tune to play before intermission, although this says intermission is next. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to click on the paragraph button, see it right up there, and that causes all of these invisible markers to be seen. I'm going to copy all of that down to and including that next page break. I'm going to do Control-C to copy that, hit the right arrow to go back up to the top, and do Control-V to paste it. This adds another page in there that is a duplicate of the previous page. So all I have to do now is delete the previous page where it says intermission is next. Be sure you don't get that paragraph marker or you'll lose the space. And come down to the next page and that says intermission is next. And so I will change that one to the tune that goes there. Sleigh Ride, and that, of course, is by the famous Lee Roy Anderson. And I left this other paragraph in there. Let me turn off the paragraph markers because Dr. Gertman is coming back on stage, and so we don't need that because he's already on the stage. So we're just going to delete that paragraph, and this is ready to go. Scrolling on down now, I usually leave the intermission page right there and start with the second half. I'll be back when that's done. I have now come to the end of this document. I have gotten all of the tunes in there, deleted all of the narrator notes that were existing, except for the last tune, both for the regular concerts and for the Christmas concert. The last tune is usually the same. Regular concerts, it's the Stars and Stripes Forever. Christmas concerts, it's a Hallelujah Chorus. I don't need to delete this because it's going to be the same every single time. The next thing we're going to do is to figure out which tunes we have played before. Now, the way to do that, I'm going to start at the very beginning and go back over to our band's website. I'm going to go back to the home page, and I'm going to go down here and click on Concert History. There it is, Concert History. And all I have to do in any browser is press Control-F. In Firefox, that puts a search box right down here at the bottom. And in other browsers, it will put it up at the top, just look for it. And what I have to do is first make sure I have the tune that I want to see, and that is going to be Festive Christmas by Kenny Beershank. I'm pretty sure we haven't done that before, but let me search. Festive Christmas, okay. Now in Firefox, I see the search box turns red. That means the phrase is not found. We haven't done festive Christmas before. So right here, I am going to type in parentheses new. Going on to the next tune, which is Let There Be Peace on Earth by Ed Huckabee. Now, I'm pretty sure we've done that one before. So I'm going to come back here. I'm going to do Control-F, which basically highlights 
the search box and type in let there, and there it is. Let there be peace on earth, arranged by Ed Huckabee. And we first did that March of 2007. I noticed down here in the bottom, there is only one match. So that's the only time we did. So right here, I'm putting in March 3, 2007. That will tell me which narrator notes I need to look at from which I can copy these notes. On to the next tune, A Home Alone Christmas. I'm pretty sure we have done this one before as well. So let's come back here. We're going to go Control F, A Home Alone Christmas. There it is, December 15th. 2012. There are two matches. Is there a later one? Let me go down to this down arrow. And we did that in 2015. That was only two years ago, but I think we're okay with that. Arranged by Paul Lavender. Yep, that's the same one. December 20th, 2015. I do want to get the latest version of the narrator note. So December 20th, 2015, and we're done. That's what I do. In phase two of creating the narrator notes skeleton document, and I'm going to stop this now and I'll come back when I've done all of that. Okay, I have finished putting in the dates of all of the tunes that we have done before and put new next to the tunes that we have not yet done. The first one is new, so I'm going to scroll down to the second one. Now, what I want to do is find the narrator notes from March 3rd, 2007 copy them from those notes and paste them in here. This is Let There Be Peace on Earth, March 3rd, 2007. To do that, I'm going back to the Dropbox folder. Here's the Dropbox folder. Now you're going to see why I sort them by name and why I file the names by date. You can see these are all in order by the date of their concert. So there's 2007. There's March the 3rd. I'm going to double click to open that. Now I'm going to find Let There Be Peace on Earth. Scrolling down. There it is. Let There Be Peace on Earth, arranged by Ed Huckabee. All I'm going to do now is click on that first word, scroll down to the bottom of that, hold down the Shift key, click. That highlights it all. I'm going to press Control-C to copy it. I'm done with that one. I'm going to close that document. I'm going to highlight everything there. Just hit the delete key and hit the paste. And I am done with that, except I noticed it imports several different styles. So let me highlight that first one. Scroll up to the top. Hold down Shift and hit Click with the mouse button and do Control Shift N. That changes everything to the normal style. I'm not going to edit it at this time. That is going to be in phase number four of creating the narrator notes. So let there be peace on earth is all done. Let's go to the next one. We'll do one more for you. A Home Alone Christmas, December 20th, 2015. Let's go back to the narrator notes repository. Let's find 2015, December the 20th. Double click and we're looking for A Home Alone Christmas. And there it is. I double click on that first word. I scroll down, hold down the shift key, click right after the end, control C to copy it, close the document, come here, hit delete, control V paste, and that one is done. Periodically, I am always pressing control S to save this document because if my computer crashes, I don't want it to go down. All right, I'm going to go through the rest of the document and copy existing narrator notes into their appropriate page. And I'll be back when that's done. Okay, we have now completed pasting of previous concerts narrator notes into the appropriate pages on the new narrator notes. The next phase is to edit those existing narrator notes so that they will be more appropriate to the concert we have right now. I'm looking at what we have now. The, pre, the first tune is a new tune. We're going to have to write new narrator notes for that. The second tune had something there, but we had a guest conductor there that is not here this time. So I'm just going to delete that whole paragraph. I'm going to read through it. The tune, Let There Be Peace on Earth, was 
Okay, that was good. That's good. That's good. Recording won several awards. Uh, this is a very short one, and we don't have that guest conductor, but we do have Dr. Paxton Gertman conducting. That's all there is to it, and that's good enough for that particular write-up. I'm going to hit Control S to save it. Don't want to lose any of my work there. Home Alone Christmas. All right, let's read through this one. That's good. Home Alone Christmas. That's good. That, that looks good as is. I don't have to work about that. I notice Brickus is set as how they pronounce it. So, okay, that's a good one. Mary's Boy Child. Going to have to write new narrator notes for that. Carol of the Bells. Now, this is the one I wanted to show you what we have to redo significantly here. We're reading the notes from before. Okay, the first paragraph is good. The second paragraph is good. Okay, third paragraph is good. But at the bottom, we have two wind-ups. First, we have, ladies and gentlemen, Larry Clark's setting of, but we don't need that. Uh, Paxton Gertman did, I'm just going back on my memory, Mary's boy child. Uh, I'm conducting that one. Dr. Gertman is conducting this one. Two. We're delighted to welcome back. Dr. Paxson Gertman conducting I'm going to delete that and I'm going to take conducting Larry Clark setting at a green sleeves. Notice I just started where the cursor was. I held down shift end and shift end. I'm going to do that again and tell you the keystrokes here. The cursor is right at the beginning of Larry Clark. I hit shift end and down arrow and shift in. Now I've got the whole end of that sentence highlighted. I'm going to take it, I'm going to drag it down here, and that makes this paragraph. We are delighted to welcome back Larry Clark setting of Carol of the Bells and Green Sleeves. And that means we don't need that paragraph. So I'm going to shift, down arrow, right arrow, delete. And that is gone. Now that particular one is complete. I'm going to keep the recording going for this entire re-editing because re-editing is important. That's too much space there. I just deleted the space. Reading through Sleigh Ride. He wrote dozens. July Heat Wave. This is good. Song was recorded. And yeah, this is kind of long, but that's okay. We're open the second half of our concert. No, well, this is the closing of the first half, so we need to edit that. Ladies and gentlemen, please enjoy that's all we need is please enjoy lee ray anderson's delightful classic sleigh ride that's all there is to that and that's good now we have the intermission we're going down below the intermission christmas pop sing along now it's your turn okay first paragraph is good okay we don't have the boy choir this time this is why i read through all this stuff so you can sing right along with the Mississippi Community Symphonic Band and be an active part of this concert. Okay, we don't have the boy choir this time. We did last time. See this double underline here? That usually appears when there's too many spaces. I delete the extra space, and that's gone. Okay, ploy hard. The, the squiggly underline means it doesn't recognize the spelling. Well, that's, of course, true because it's his name. Notice we have a double underline there. I'm going to click and delete the extra space. Going to click and delete the extra space. I don't think I wrote this particular one because I don't usually put in two spaces like that. Okay, Santa Claus, Silver Bells, and have yourself. That's good. Okay, we don't have a special song leader tonight. Uh, the narrator is going to be the song leader, so I'm simply just deleting that paragraph. I'm just going to delete that whole first paragraph and say, join with us. Join with us now. No boy choir. Now. Don't be shy. Follow the... Oops, we don't have the words in the programs. You know the words. Because we're not passing them out now. You know the words. So, so sing along with us all now. 
We don't need all. Sing with us, sing along with us now in this delightful celebration of Christmas. Maestro, take it away. Okay, that was one that had significant rewrites that needed to be done based on what's coming up in this concert. Okay, green sleeves, that's going to need to be written up new. We need Little Christmas. I think this is about one of the last ones we need here. Okay, first paragraph. Oh, that's good. That's good, ladies and gentlemen. As we play for you now, Ted Brick. Okay, that's that's good. I'm going to leave it as is. The Nutcracker. Let's see if we need to rewrite this at all. One of the most loved tunes, Nutcracker. Here we go. Kerno has. This is a bit long, but by this time in the concert, and this is one of the things I keep in mind. By this time in the concert, the band is tired. It's right near the end. This is the next to the last tune. Yeah, not, Hallelujah is next. And so a little bit longer announcement may get the audience a bit antsy and on edge. But you know what? It gives the band a little bit more time to rest. So I'm going to leave it probably as long as it is. Let me see if there's anything in there that needs to come out. Okay, it tells a little bit about the arranger, uh, but that doesn't need to be more than about five or ten seconds about who the arranger was. Okay, and I think we're playing six of the movements this time. So where it says five movements, I'm going to just change that to several. Several movements from this delightful work, including miniature overture, march, don't worry, you'll recognize them when you hear them. Dance of the Sugar Bone Fairy, Dance, and Waltz of the Flowers. And there's one in there that I don't remember what it is right now. And it doesn't matter if we leave it out simply because nobody is going to know. Okay, the rest of that, that looks good. And the Hallelujah Chorus is usually good, or the last write-up is usually good. But I am going to read through it one more time just to make sure it's good. And that pretty much completes all of the skeleton narrator notes. In other words, we've put everything together that we can. At this point, all that's left to do is to write the new narrator notes, and we will be done. That's all I have for you now. Let me know if you have any questions. Here are a few final things to keep in mind. You can go ahead and stop this video now if you like, but there's a few other things I believe everybody needs to know if they're ever going to write narrator notes. First, the personality of the narrator is very important. The narrator must absolutely put enthusiasm into the words. They must not sound like they're reading from a script, even though they are. The more excited and involved the narrator can get about what they're saying, the more involved the audience will be. Second, don't talk too long. As you're writing these notes, keep in mind that just because you, the writer, think something is interesting or fun, that doesn't mean it has to go into the notes. Remember, the audience came to hear a concert, not the narrator. On the flip side of that coin, there is this. There is no such thing as a narration that is too long. There is only a narration that is too boring. What this means is you can have your narrator speak for only 10 seconds and put people to sleep. Or in the extreme instances, they can talk for a minute or two and keep the audience spellbound the whole time. In general, you don't want narrations to go more than about 15 to 30 seconds. But those words have to be good content, and they must be crafted so they are interesting to hear. Phrases such as, This next piece opens with a brilliant fanfare in the brass, followed by a canonical development in the woodwinds. Good grief, these are total yawners. No one cares about that stuff, with the possible exception of music history geeks. Always be sure to write your narrator notes so that all the old ladies in the audience coming in from that retirement home will find them fascinating and not too long. Keep in mind the three B's of public speaking. Be recognized, be brief, and be seated. I hope this helps others create better narrator notes. Please leave us a comment below and click the thumbs up button. If you'd like to be notified, if you'd like to be notified whenever we post a new tutorial video, click the subscribe button then the bell icon beside it. Thanks for watching.